you have to do this seriously and take it seriously and grind mm-hmm. and do the proper things. You need to get any information you can get and between news, techniques, ideas, that's very valuable. So anybody who's listening to this, if you do want to do this seriously, take heed, listen, learn everywhere, but definitely learn here because this they're, they're dropping some knowledge. You're going to get something good out of this. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Stream Key Podcast. Today's a Tuesday. It's a little bit different this week because uh, we were actually closed yesterday for Columbus Day. So we're back in the office today. We have two special guests with us today. Real quick, if you guys haven't seen this show before, this is uh, the show where we help you level up your stream on Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, anywhere else that you can stream, which we're going to talk about today too. Uh, but coming back to the show for you guys are just regular co-hosts at this point now. Uh, we have MPI back with us. MPI, how's it going, man? It's going good, man. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming back again on the short notice. Also, Vel is out this week due to some personal things, but he should be back next Monday. So stay tuned for him. Uh, we will see him soon. <laughs> Sodomi is also back as another regular co-host at this point. Sodomi, how's it going, man? Hey, hey. Got to be back. It's like my 27th time here this yeah. month. So. <laughs> Get it. Regular guest now. <laughs> How you doing, man? Loving it. I'm loving it. Always like being on the show. It's always a lot of fun. A lot of cool questions. Oh, oh yeah <laughs> i like the hat <laughs> looking good thank you in case anyone didn't know you know yeah. my name two, you got two name tags just... on you now just in case people don't know exactly yeah. in case someone yeah. wants to crop out the name part because some people <laughs> do that on twitter and everything so you know we got to keep our Boom. just got to keep the copyright up there at all times <laughs> exactly yeah. you remind me of the guy from metallica that wore a metallica shirt on stage every night <laughs> so in case you didn't know you're seeing metallica here's your reminder <laughs> right i mean hey it worked <laughs> So real quick, can you guys uh, recap a little about your stream? Just a quick elevator pitch for people who kind of maybe aren't familiar with you, although most are at this point, I'm sure. MPI, you want to start? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so like you said, my name is Mr. Pure Instinct or MPI, uh, as a lot of people know me at this point. We do a lot of story-based games, play some Dead by Daylight, uh, just started playing Hunt recently, which has also been a fun one to include. Um We'd like to, uh, to have fun and talk about real stuff sometimes, talk about mental health a lot, and make sure that chat is a good, safe place if somebody needs to be and vent, just relax, or uh, look for advice, or whatever you need. Gotcha. And sometimes we're Batman masks, too. Sometimes we wear a Batman mask. Um, we got two masks new for Halloween this year that light up, got real fancy. Ooh. Killing it at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> there you go. Are you, are you one of those people who gets really excited about Halloween season? Yeah, I love Halloween. So Halloween is my favorite holiday, and fall is easily my favorite time of year. Like, it's just warm enough to be nice out, but it's just cold enough to to be comfortable. So during Halloween, usually all I play is horror games or, like, Halloween-themed stuff. Mm-hmm. And then for every uh, subscriber or um, bits, tips, things like that, I wear Halloween masks of that person's choice. Gotcha. That's fun. I know some people get really excited about Halloween, like even more so than Christmas or Thanksgiving or other holidays. So that's pretty funny. I definitely get more excited about Halloween than Thanksgiving. And Christmas is probably a close second. But I mm-hmm. think as I've gotten older, Halloween has taken over Christmas. Because when I was a kid, it's like, Christmas is great. I get presents. Now I'm like, I don't have any money to buy people presents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just watch scary movies. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> also, Sodomi, uh, do you want to do your little quick elevator pitch for people? Sure, everyone. My name is Adomi. I am a competitive Rocky player and podcaster. I'm the host of the Perspective Podcast, where I had Mr. MP on as a guest. I'll be launching the whole podcast pretty soon, but a few, few smaller quips are coming throughout the week, so look out for that on my YouTube channel. Um, and for Rocket League, I play in two leagues. I play in United Rogue, a 3v3 league, and Minor League Esports, a 2v2 league. I'm in the champ division in both. And uh, we have playoffs this coming weekend, so if you want to come by, our game will be streamed around 8 o'clock-ish. We'll know the exact time later on but hey we're gonna go clap some cheeks that day so come watch some cheeks get clapped if that's what you're into <laughs> go watch <laughs> um yeah i saw the little perspective podcast snippet on twitter which is pretty cool to see i know you're talking about that for a little while so that's awesome yeah it's, it's, it's a passion project because i figured it's something i've been really into and i'm like let me just express that because mm-hmm. it's part of me it's something i really want to talk about and when i have guests as easy as mpi to talk to like how can you not do it come on it's just it's easy no brainer. <laughs> gotcha. Cool. Uh, guys, also, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Greencord, the media marketing director at True Gaming. Uh, so, again, to recap the show a little bit, we're going to go through streaming news for the first 20 ish minutes here. 
and then the rest of the hour after that hour and a half will be calls and questions from you guys you can call into the show via discord or you can just leave your comments in chat for us to answer related to streaming news questions anything like that so first off let's go through the news which i will pull up really quickly here so there was a good bit of stuff this week um and it's sort of all over the place the first thing that i want to mention is affiliate ad revenue is now live uh, we covered that a couple weeks ago coming to twitch soon it is now live uh affiliates can roll ad breaks i have an, an a option right here on our dashboard to do that haven't done it yet uh it's a three fifth three dollar fifty cpm which basically means for every thousand impressions or views that you get with an ad you get about three dollars and fifty cents so there's been a lot of memes going around about people making 10 cents off of ads rolling in the bank yet uh have you guys tried out ad breaks at all in your streams yet because you're both affiliates on twitch right so Domi, are you an affiliate on twitch still because you were kind of back and forth with mixer too okay yeah, I didn't cut that out, no. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Some people do, so I wasn't totally sure. Um, MPI, have you tried out ad uh, revenue stuff at all? No, I haven't. Um, I'm not huge on ads on Twitch, and mm -hmm. I, I know that obviously Twitch has to make money, so they're not going away, but I feel like ads during live content is such a pain in the butt. And I can see if you're streaming for eight or nine hours and, you know, taking a 10, 15 minute break every now and then running some ads before like your be right back screen mm -hmm. would work well, but that I just don't run my streams that way. So it would be hard to drop an ad right in the middle mm. of every, cause it's, I kind of just keep the momentum going the whole way through unless I need to step away for an unexpected reason. Mm. Do you don't think you would use it even if you had to step away for a bit? I think if I knew I was going to step away, like if I knew I'm going to step away every two hours or three hours, I would run them then. But it's most of my streams are kind of around the four to five hour mark right now. So it's sometimes I don't step away during the whole stream at all. Mm, gotcha. Okay. So Domi, what do you think about ad stuff or affiliates so far? Have you tried it at all? I haven't tried it yet because um, the way I've been working with my streams lately is I don't go for too long anymore. I'm kind of like, do my good two hours, talk talk my mess, get my point out there, and get on out. But <laughs> in the future, I do have plans for it. Uh, I plan to, at some point, because the one thing I do have a problem with is I'm very fidgety. I can't sit still. <laughs> and so I have to get up and, like, move around or even, like, go to the bathroom, get, get some water, drink something. And so whenever I'm, like, focused on, like, stream chat and everything, I'll notice my, I got to get up more. So I get up more. And it's probably when I probably would run to run those ads. But for the most part, as MPI knows, we talked about earlier, I'm not a fan of ads. Like, I hate them. I don't want to talk <laughs> to anybody else. But if I want to, and like, and also if you're, let's be honest, if it's the CPM of three, 350, um, once you're averaging over 100 over time, it's, you cannot run them. Mm -hmm. The only reason I would run them is mm -hmm. to prevent the pre, the pre rolls, because that's something, if I can control where I, I get interrupted, I'd rather control that than. Just have it randomly happen. People come in because it could be they come in at a great time or after a raid, and then <laughs> just <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, so we covered like maybe last week or two uh, that supposedly raiding into ads is a bug. I don't know if that's been fixed yet. To be honest, I haven't been part of a raid recently. Um, mm -hmm. But going back to the part that you mentioned about pre rolls uh, at TwitchCon, they announced that they would be. They would let you do away with pre-rolls if you basically agreed to run ad breaks on a certain interval. Now, to be clear, that has not launched yet. So while we do have affiliate ad revenue and affiliates can run ads now, they haven't made it clear or they haven't rolled out a feature yet to disable pre-rolls. So that's important. Do you guys think you would use the ad breaks if eventually they launched the feature where they would block the pre-rolls? MPI, do you feel like you would feel differently there? I feel like I would be more likely to because then I could just kind of tell people like, hey, um, I have to do this to event the, to prevent the pre-roll. So mm -hmm. click to another tab for 30 seconds, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, also, sorry, go ahead. Kind of like Sodomi said, like, unless you're averaging hundreds of viewers at a time, you know, the, it could take you a few months to make $3.50. Like, I don't feel like Twitch has incentivized me to want to push these ads on people when already being not a huge content creator those get in the way no matter what and people don't want to see them so why am i going to force them on people when you know we average 15 to 20 viewers mm, yeah it's true i think in the chat that they were saying uh skyward keyblade said 
that they wouldn't do it because it would just annoy people and the money isn't worth it to turn people off the stream. I'm, I'm kind of curious off of that. Do you feel like there's a point where running ads is worth it? Like maybe a certain terms of a number of viewers or a type of content where you think it fits. So don't do you feel like there's any place for it? So actually with the ideas I gave you, um, with the live shows and everything, mm -hmm. uh, ad breaks also, when you think about it, are a good off screen time mm -hmm. to do background stuff, to transition. It's kind of like setting the scene in the theater. So instead of just having a blind curtain or having an intermission, you would just have those ads roll because nothing's really happening on your stream anyway that time. Mm -hmm. So you have that time. It's like, okay, I'll set this, do this here, 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 here. And also it kind of gives you a, you can set the length of the ad breaks. So you can all, that's a really cool feature. You can't just do like 30 seconds, two seconds, whatever. Mm -hmm. So if you can change the custom, sorry, you can change the amount of time it runs for, you can have that time set up for your stream. But okay, so I have two minutes to set up all this, 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 and this. And then I come back, I'm good at this moment when it ends, when it's good, when it's there. So like I said, there's, there's, it's a tool. Mm -hmm. Like I said, with everything. I'm not going to say no to more tools because you don't have to use them. If you can find a good use for them, it could be great for you. Right. Yeah. Mm. It all depends on context. Like that kind of reminds me of, uh, we've been watching the league world championship has been happening and they have just like that. They have, you know, three minute break or whatever. And that's always when they run ads and it's just very natural because nothing's happening anyway. So I think that's a good yeah. example. Um, one thing that treasure hunter Thompson chat is it'd be cool if you could bank pre-rolls so you could run them like right at the start of your stream and then be ad free for the rest of the stream. That'd be pretty cool if it rolls out that way where you can just hit start streaming and start ads like right there before anyone gets to the totally stream. That. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Hopefully. Yeah, I would start my stream 10 minutes early just to do that. Yeah, I would just seriously. Go live and walk away and go make my coffee or whatever I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see. I don't see Twitch really letting us do that because the point is to get impressions. So mm -hmm. yeah. clearly it's not going to be any impressions if you do that type of thing, but we'll see. Hopefully we'll hear more about the pre-roll stuff soon. I would like to see more on that because i really think that's gonna be a huge feature also getting the ads off of non-affiliate and non-partner channels could be really big i think yeah yeah <laughs> so all right that was the first thing uh if you guys have more thoughts on ads or maybe you tried them out i'd love to have you call in and give your thoughts or just leave them in the chat moving on we had the Streamlabs quarter three report which we touched on the stream elements report last week <laughs> which you guys are both here for uh, this one has some similarities, but also has a bit more information. So I'll put it in the chat if you want to go through it with us. Uh, some of my big takeaways. So over the last quarter, there was a huge spike in streamers on Mixer. So following Ninja's move, a lot of people moved over to Mixer and started streaming there. But interestingly, overall watch time went down on Mixer. Which you would think, you know, you see all these streamers moving their communities to Mixer. Everyone's trying it out. There should be more people watching, right? It's actually less people watching. And that could be for a lot of things. You know, one thing I was talking about in our Discord was it could be some of these like farming channels that were on Mixer. If you guys saw the Forza stuff where it was just these 24 7 farming streams and a ton of lurkers. If they like got rid of that, got rid of that, then it could be, you know, that's not really an important stat to get rid of. <laughs> so it's not that big of a deal, but if it's actually just regular viewers losing interest, that's pretty severe, especially given how much of a jump there was in streamers on Mixer. Um, so Domi, you you still do stuff on Mixer, correct? You go back and forth between Twitch and Mixer? Mm -hmm. I currently restream, so I stream to both Twitch and Mixer as well. Gotcha, okay. So do you have any thoughts on seeing some of this data? Um. So with one thing that people will forget is that people and this might break a lot of people's hearts when I say this, but a lot of people don't really care about your stream enough to go change a whole platform if no one else is on that platform as you as well. Mm -hmm. And I learned that the easy and, and the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's kind of like having all your, having every, every shop in the same plaza situation. If there's a finish line out in Greece and you live in, we'll say Turkey, Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to keep out of personal location. There's, there's a town near me named Greece, so I'm trying okay. to not use that in, in any way. Um, let's say you have a actually better idea. So you have a shop in LA that you like, but every other shop you go to is in San Diego, and there's a shop that's just close enough that sells pretty much the same thing in like San Diego. You're gonna stay in San Diego. You're not gonna go to LA to go to that shop. So that's kind of one thing when people switched over, they didn't take that into account. Um, and it's hard to take that into account when you look at it, it kind of tells you how people feel about your content versus just you know being on twitch as a whole mm -hmm. people view twitch itself as a content a content hole like a watering hole 
So you switch streams from Twitch from back to back to back to back. because That's what I do. I assume other people do it as well. Mm -hmm. So going to a whole new site is pretty un too much effort for a lot of people, I'll say. So you gotcha. don't get the same viewership transitioning over. Yeah, it's a lot of effort for the viewer to move platforms if they're not used to it, sort of, right? And really committed to that streamer. Uh, you, you have yes. to have really good content to warrant that move, I think, if people have never been there before. Mm -hmm. For sure, that's fair. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to mention, on the flip side of this, looking at some of the Twitch data, Twitch streamers have gone down over the last quarter, so there are less people streaming now than there were three months ago. But watch time has gone up which is really interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, we talked a couple of weeks back about the streaming bubble burst where I kind of felt like the hype of streaming was kind of dying off a little bit in particular with Twitch. And now we actually have the data to show it. There's less people streaming now than there have been over the past couple quarters, which is interesting. But also since viewership's going up, that means it's, I, there was a 14% average viewer growth through the year per channel. So basically all channels across the board are up 14% uh, in viewers, which is pretty cool. So even though you see all these streamers jumping ship to Mixer, really people on Twitch are growing, whereas people on Mixer are not growing. So maybe a good time to be on Twitch. If you see all your friends jumping ship to Mixer, maybe don't do that if uh, you're just doing it because everyone else is because the data is showing that people are not watching this. People who are jumping to Mixer. Uh, MPI, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, you like you said, don't follow everyone just because they're jumping to Mixer when it's with the numbers, you know, views are here on Twitch still. I think we kind of covered it the last time we talked about this, that a lot of people followed Ninja and all of them probably had the same thought of, OK, well, Ninja's going there. There's less people. That means that I'll get more viewers and that means I'll make more money really fast. <laughs> and it didn't work that way, just like a lot of us knew it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So I think... Sodomi, you're right in green saying that it's hard to pull people there unless you have just like either immaculate content or people just love you and want to follow you. Other than that, people aren't going to follow you, follow you there. It's it's an extra four steps. You have to create an account and everything like that. That's a whole whole nother site. You have to go to a whole nother account you have to make when I could just stay here on Twitch and keep watching people that I already like. Mm -hmm. So it's. Why would I follow one person when everyone else is here that I want to watch? Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think? I mean, clearly Mixer made a big play in buying Ninja. And uh, I would argue based on this report that it hasn't really paid off that much yet. Um, also, I just haven't seen Mixer talked about as much as maybe we thought it would be. Do you think like they could have done something differently or done more over the past quarter to, to kind of grow their lead on top of uh, acquiring Ninja? So don't have any thoughts? So I'm friends with a few Mixer partners and um, I've talked to them about the whole, this whole situation as well. And one thing I've noticed from a lot of people is that there are people who look at the short game and then the long game. Good example. What's coming out in a few months now that was a really big franchise that's owned by Microsoft that is prevalent on the Xbox platform? Halo. Maybe. Exactly. I'm having the same <laughs> thought that you're having. Exactly. It's, it's not a short-term play. Mm. Like, this is a... We're going to be good for the next two years because they want Ninja. And this is my this is my speculation. No one told me anything. This is what I think. Um, Ninja is going to be the poster boy for the new Halo when it comes out because Fortnite. It's like every game. It's going to dip down in popularity unless mm -hmm. it's like like at some point like new things come out. The attention span of the average person is way shorter than it used to be. There's just so much more coming out that the new thing is always going to be the best, bigger thing, the bigger, better thing. Um, whether it stays up there or not, that's hard to tell. But with the prestige Halo has, there, it makes sense for them to play the long game for this. Mm -hmm. The long game for this. Do you think Halo will have the potential to kind of upset the streaming world in that capacity? E yes, I'll say this because um, also demographic. The people who played Halo back in the day that was what 10, 15 years ago almost yeah. at this point. They now have jobs, you know, have more disposable income probably. They are into gaming. They have their better market, I'd say. Yeah. I, I only worry because the past Halo games have not been great with Halo 4, especially, but also Halo 5 was not that well received. I know they put a lot of work into it. Um, so they've kind of dug themselves a hole to get out of. And so they're really going to have to deliver with this new one to make up for that ground. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. that's why they bought Ninja 2. 
because they needed someone they needed to make a good impression because like i said mm-hmm. halo halo 3 is the last halo i remember that was good mind you i'm not really a halo fanboy or anything i don't really play halo that much but three's the last one i remember was like a game of the year game mm. so yeah i really think they're just they're playing out for halo and that's when they're going to make their big like push because if you don't see them quiet now they're probably saving up building up to put like a wave and crash and like just they're gonna do something big i'm not sure what they're gonna do but they're gonna do something big and i'm mm-hmm. excited to see that gotcha yeah i think the chat agrees with you it looks like uh e riddler and cornucopia both think halo is the big reason they're doing this so we'll see uh mpi yeah. anything else to add so i think there's there's three things with ninja specifically for halo one of them being that's where he started and i think a lot of people forget that that he was a halo 2 pro player and that's how he got started in the gaming industry in general and creating content was his Halo 2 videos on YouTube and his streams. And then also he's got the influence of the whole new generation that just came into gaming with Fortnite. So I'm sure they're seeing it as, well, if Ninja starts playing Halo, you know, all these kids that like Fortnite are going to want to play Halo. And then we can get all of them into Halo and pull them in. The third thing with it is if you're in the Halo community now, which I'm not as much as I used to be, but I still follow it very closely, is it seems like, I'm going to knock on wood for this, <laughs> that uh, 343 has actually been listening to the people who are core involved in the Halo community and have had communications and are wanting to make this game more back to the roots of what Halo was rather than you know whatever Halo 4 and 5 became. And I think mixing those three things together and having Ninja be kind of the poster boy of Halo is going to be a big thing for him. And I think that is the, their kind of their long con right now. It could be. My only concern, I, I followed Halo a good bit too. The problem is everything you just said is exactly what I heard about Halo 5. I heard, oh, we're talking True. about all these pros. 343 is really working hard to make the competitive really good. And I think it was actually good when it came out, but the reception was clearly not what Halo 2 and Halo 3 were. So... Mm-hmm. That's why I still emphasize I think they're going to have to work really hard if they want to kind of reclaim the throne with Halo. It could be possible, and maybe having Ninja helps there, but we'll see. It's also one game as opposed to a whole platform, so that's kind of tricky to do. All right. Yeah. And with that, too, they're also launching a new console. Mm, so I'm sure that's yeah. going to be trying to pull people to the Microsoft side because we've already had you know Ninja playing Gears 5 on Microsoft's owned consoles owned streaming website own ip and then you're gonna have halo and whatever else they throw at him so Mm -hmm. i'm sure that's also gonna be a little bit of a move of okay well you can buy the xbox whatever the next one is (laughs) you can stream directly to mixer just like ninja does and you can play the new halo game on it day one and people are gonna love it yeah so also i think it's gonna happen too um when the new console does come out the scarlet it's called that's, that's what it Scarlet? is right now. Okay, yeah. So when Scarlet comes out, um, Ninja's going to probably be the first person to have that console oh, to yeah. be allowed to stream it, and that's and show off like new games, new hardware. It's he's going to max settings, everything. So like I said, if anything, Ninja's going to be Microsoft and Mixer's PR face pretty soon. He's going to be the LeBron James of Microsoft. <laughs> Yeah, that was kind of a weird, we'll weird, see. Weird analogy there, but like the face. I don't know. This is like morphing into a whole console debate now. But uh, yeah, we'll have to we'll just have to wait and see what they end up doing with it. Uh, I would like to see them bring more streamers over to Mixer too, or just create more of a viewership lance well too, because that's the issue. Clearly, they're not having an issue getting streamers on the platform. Uh, in terms of new streamers, it's people watching the platform that's an issue now. So we'll see. Also, a quick other last points on the report. Uh, in terms of YouTube, there are less people streaming on the platform in this quarter, but the watch time is the same. So that's actually good for streamers. That means that viewers are going up across the board. Uh, and also Fortnite is very close to being dethroned on Twitch, but not quite. Although this came out last week and over the last weekend, you, I'm sure you guys <laughs> saw all the Fortnite craziness that was being streamed. People just staring at a black hole for 48 hours and hundreds of thousands of people watching that for some reason so <laughs> yeah, that's clearly say, i'm sure it's not anymore <laughs> yeah especially now that we have the new season that came out too it's probably going to be a good resurgence for fortnite unfortunately yeah. but yeah. what can you do 
Uh, okay, last big piece of news here, really kind of switching gears, is there, if you guys didn't see this, there was a, a crisis that happened last week where there was a German synagogue shooting and someone streamed it on Twitch in the CSGO section. That was obviously very, very bad. But what was interesting is Twitch made a detailed thread on what happened and how they responded to it, which they don't usually do. Twitch is often very uh, reclusive and kind of deals with everything in private. But I linked the thread in the chat if you want to read through it. Some interesting points is they kind of break down exactly how many people saw it and how many impressions it caused on people. So apparently while it was live, only five people actually saw it live. But then after it got the, you know, the stream finished, there was a VOD created about 2,200 people saw the VOD, although it was not recommended through algorithms, which is really good. So you weren't seeing it via like suggested clips or anything. It was all through Reddit and external sites being shared around. Um, so they removed it as quickly as they could. And then they actually, I had to look into this. They shared the video hash with an industry consortium. I can't say that word. Uh, which basically means like a, a video fingerprint sort of like the, the data of a video to be identified and removed from other external sites, which means they took it very seriously, which is really cool. And a lot of people had good things to say in response to this thread that they were so forthcoming with like the details. Here's what happened. Here's why it happened. Here's how we responded. So what did you guys think of seeing all the details on this? Obviously, you know, the, the, uh, incident aside, Twitch's response, I think is something cool to talk about here. MPI, what are your thoughts? I think that with Twitch being what it is in general and just not as many people knowing about it and then it making huge national news and this could be the first time people are seeing Twitch, mm -hmm. I think them just being blatant and honest about everything and as transparent as they can be is the best thing they could have done. Mm -hmm. um, both from just being genuine human beings and as a company overall, this is what every company should do when something like this happens should be transparent with what happened how it happened and what you're doing to move forward from it right and i think they had some pretty good tools to respond to that um so Domi, what do you think about how twitch handled all of this i think mba put it on the head um whenever you have a situation like this it's one of those things where you can't really control it Till, until well you can you can't control what's happening but you can control the aftermath and i think the way they handled it was probably the best way you could handle it um and quite frankly like the the fact that they kind of like hey this happened this is here we did this to remove we're sorry for all that happened let's uh keep being awesome keep doing awesome things let's move on forward i like that um i don't like the idea of talking about or rather like putting more attention on tragedies themselves mm-hmm Mm -hmm. because like you know people like attention if you don't if you look at youtube or tiktok or any other social media platform people do dumb ish all the time for attention so mm -hmm. less attention we bring to that matter you know <clears throat> better mm -hmm. but yeah being open honest transparent direct with it hey this happened this is how we fixed it let's cool right yeah i think yeah. overall it was pretty good response some people thought that twitch have handled this right away which I mean, they're a huge company, right? They can't possibly get on everything at the instant it's happening. And unfortunately, there are some extreme cases like this where this stuff really needs to be taken down as soon as possible. But um, I, I'm glad they at least like went through the process of stuff. And even, I think it was good they kind of gave impression numbers so that we kind of understood really, I mean, yes, five people saw this. One thing that you saw comments on was like, why didn't these five people report it? Um, but I think that's a pretty small number compared to how big it could have been, especially if it got into like recommended things. So mm -hmm. it's good that they were able to kind of show how minimal the impact was. And also the fact that most of the VOD views were off of Twitch through like embeds or Reddit links and things that was good to hear too. So, um, I, I'm, I hope we see more of that from Twitch. Um, even if it's on like obviously less extreme cases where they just kind of explain the thought process or their, uh, whatever the process is for other bans or other removals, why things were made, uh, decisions were made in that order. So those yeah. are the big pieces of news this week. And we have a couple of smaller things, which are still very interesting. <laughs> uh, first of all, the founder badges are out, which I think Beardy had, if I scroll yep. up here. Yep. Beardy, in our channel, you can see it, guys, a little first badge. Um, I will link the tweet there for that too, if I can grab it here. I don't have a link for it. Okay. Well, you can see it in the chat. Basically, 
it's for both affiliates and partners and it's for the first 10 affiliate subscribers and first 25 partner subscribers you get that badge if you were one of the first subscribers in a channel which is pretty cool um i'm sure a lot of you guys have seen that in some of the streams that you watch i think it might be out for everyone now it seems like it was a slightly staggered rollout but i think it's out mm -hmm. for everyone you guys both have access to it i do okay so don't yeah, i have the option for it yeah gotcha okay pretty cool I, I like to see they have more ways of customization like that and support i think it's also cool uh, because now when you get affiliate you have a really cool perk to offer to the people for being there helping you get affiliate or helping you kind of kick things off that's mm -hmm. pretty cool um there's also the new dashboard is live you have the option to activate it in your dashboard on twitch i actually have not activated it yet because i just want to use the one i know i'm just that way with technology but uh have you guys tried out the new one at all yet either of you i've not I, tried it yet but um i'm i'm planning on trying it either later on today or tomorrow um again like i'd rather gary think set and like taken care of because new dashboard maybe an option is not there like my stream key could be missing who knows because you know how new it was to be they'll miss like the small things yeah. like wait where's this i need to find this or like why are emotes in my security security settings or so. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, they rolled out the YouTube Creator Studio update a little while ago, and I still don't use that because I just like the <laughs> one that I've learned at this point. Uh, MPI, have you tried out the new dashboard at all for Twitch? Uh, I haven't used it, but I took my um, my bot account and signed into Twitch, and I'm looking at it right now. Mm -hmm. It sure is new. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's new. So <laughs> I like some of it, and I don't like some of it. Mm -hmm. I like that. So on the side, you have your quick actions is what they call it. And that's like change your stream info. Uh, you can raid from there. You can do a clip or add a marker and you can customize those. So you mm -hmm. can remove things that you will not use and add things that you do want to use. That's nice, but they become a button. So you have to click it and then something pops up where you can edit your title, your live notification, mm -hmm. category, all that kind of stuff, rather than it just already being there. So it's it feels like an extra step just to pull these things up. Yeah, I feel like it's probably designed, you know, this actually came out of a result of the Twitch Studio app that they're developing. I think this is probably just designed for beginners to understand it a bit easier. It's mm -hmm. my that's uh, my thought process. Um people in the chat feel kind of differently about it. It seems like uh Greg says it's very bare bones, British Adventure doesn't like it. <laughs> I'm curious yeah. uh, if anybody does like it a lot. I I don't really feel either way about it. I just don't feel like learning it right now <laughs> so i'm just using the old one but i yeah. like that you can customize stuff that's kind of cool and kind of in like a stream deck fashion create little hotkeys almost with the buttons it seems like mm -hmm. so. yeah because it's just like i can do stream info clip raid marker um uh, host channel mm -hmm. which some of these i don't feel like need to be a button you can just slash host or slash yeah. raid and it's just as fast in my opinion well that's where i think it probably is nice for beginners because if you're on the yeah. standard one it's not super clear there's like a raid and host box all the way on the right but if there's just a button it's probably a lot easier it definitely feels like it's more geared towards newer streamers mm -hmm. uh, and if you do try it and you don't like it as if you click your name like you would sign out or change from dark mode light mode that kind of stuff you can leave new dashboard and it immediately takes me back to the original one mm. okay so if you try it and you don't like it for now anyway you can get yep. out of it i don't know <laughs> how long that'll happen but right now you can get out of it if you decide you hate it right that's how the youtube one is too i think a lot of software stuff will do that but eventually yeah. we'll force you to move over to the new one so um dat glass in the chat says he likes it a lot more actually than the old setup clean and things are easier to find which i i definitely think that was the case if you're not familiar with the existing dashboard it's probably mm -hmm. just simple to have everything right there in front of you uh, honestly i'm looking at it now and i i kind of like how simple it looks like aesthetically pleasing. it's very aesthetically pleasing for me mm -hmm. personally because like everything is kind of has its space is air the text is like big enough where you can like read what things are right and this way, you don't have to like sit there like, okay, where is this? It's like, okay, glance over. Do, 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 do. Cool, right there. <laughs> there you go. So that's out, guys. If you want to try it out, go ahead. Um, also, if you have thoughts about it, I know people are asking in the chat about the Discord. Um, let me link that in the chat if you want to go ahead and start getting in there for calls about this or something else. Uh, some other pieces of news here. 
So <laughs> this is interesting one. So actually, Trump launched his own Twitch account over the last week, but he's not the first one to do it. Actually, Bernie Sanders and Andrew Yang have done it as well and have streamed. And he did stream over the past week. He just streamed one of his rallies. There was no interaction. It was just, you know, direct pump out to Twitch of the rally. Um, that was interesting. We might see more presidential candidates jump onto Twitch. I don't want to get into like political debates here, but like, what do you guys think about presidential candidates using Twitch as a way to kind of gain more attention? Uh, MPI, you have thoughts? Uh, I sure don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to explain? I, I understand the thought process of why they want to, but Twitch as an overall demographic is younger. Um, and I don't feel like it's the place for that. Hmm. Personally. Just, okay. Uh, it's, it's, you you have a lot of people who are, you know, 13 to 17 years old who can't vote anyway, and they're impressionable on their thoughts and they get kind of, that can get forced in their face more than if it's on like Fox news. Like I don't have to turn on the debate on TV, but if I go to Twitch and it's on the front page, it's there in my face. I can't get away from it without clicking away. I mean, I feel like that's kind of the same thing as TV. I mean, you can always click away. No? You feel differently? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't particularly like politics in general. And right. I think that a place like Twitch is more of a fun, carefree area. And as soon as politics get involved, it can immediately turn negative. Because everyone's going to disagree with somebody and no one's going to say, oh, yeah, you know what? I see why you think that and I disagree with you and then move on. It's going to be lots of personal attacks. That Twitch chat is going to be nothing but toxicity. Yeah, the the Twitch yeah, chat was interesting. Guaranteed. <laughs> I will say it's that. just toxic and I, I don't feel like it needs to be on Twitch. Gotcha. Okay. So Domi, what are your thoughts on it? Now I'm of the opposite mentality. <laughs> I think it's good because one thing, and this will be a little political here is that, Everyone shies away from politics so much. That's if you add talk to a random person about politics, a lot of them don't aren't informed mm. just because no one talks about it because no one has like the the that's why a lot of people did not vote. Like a lot of people don't vote. People don't understand how many people don't vote. In fact, I was one of the people I didn't vote like before in my life. Mm -hmm. But after recently kind of like doing my research and doing all the stuff on that, I'd rather people have the information and make an informed decision than just believe one thing for one echo chamber mind you that's going to happen no matter what because you're in you know you're going to go to the streams you like you're going to go to the candidates you like you're not going to listen to trump if you don't like trump you're not going to listen to andrew yang if you don't like andrew yang mm -hmm. that's you know right there but having the option to i think is always good again it's an option will the chat be toxic chat's toxic everywhere like everywhere <laughs> every stream with more than 500 people is absolute garbage like if you if you read any twitch chat you will lose brain cells it's guaranteed <laughs> But sorry, chat. Having <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I, yeah, yeah. it's our fault. I, <laughs> it's the darn truth. <laughs> it's, it's true. Like I said, no, a I, large chat. Like you know I think I mean. you both have good points there. I think um, like the just the awareness about politics in general could be good overall, right? People who mm -hmm. maybe are just kind of scared to think about politics or just don't want to even be bothered to maybe that just fosters some education about both sides you know because it has been both sides at this point right you've seen democrats and republicans um so that could be good in terms of mpi what you said i think there's definitely potential abuse if you're hitting like that real younger demographic and it's more of like the direct um conversational streams as opposed to like what trump did was just exporting a rally from one platform to another Versus what some other candidates, you know, I didn't actually see what Yang did at all. I think Bernie did more of like a, a traditional Twitch stream where he was gaming or something. Um, but in general, like, it's just interesting to see that these politicians are taking Twitch seriously, in a sense, as a new way to reach people. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if we see more of that as, you know, the next year goes on or uh, what else kind of comes out of that. So I know some of you guys want to call in about this topic. I see a couple of you in the chat. Hang on. We'll pull you in a second here. Uh, let me just go through the rest of our intro topics and I'd love to have you call in. So let me jump back in there really quickly to the rest of our news. A couple of small little things. Um, there is a new feature for Streamlabs OBS, which is really cool that I want to talk about. Uh, it's called selective recording, which basically means that while you're live, you can 
be so if you're streaming already and you want to record a youtube video or something at the same time now you can choose to exclude short certain scenes or sources from that vod so let's say you're streaming a game of i'll just use leaks that's i'm familiar with you could also be recording but then take out your overlay or your music or whatever and do both at the same time which i think is a really cool feature for people who like to multitask um, or it, there's probably other cases you could use this for. Have you guys either used Streamlabs OBS or maybe are you considering using it after hearing about this? I used to, and then I couldn't stream. So I used both back to OBS. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> kind I, of a big I issue there. Bash, I hate bashing slobs, but like it's, it's after it just doesn't, it's not as consistent as OBS and consistency is like the most important thing. Mm. Yeah. That's for I sure. used slobs for a while and, I stopped because it just wouldn't recognize my webcam anymore. It just, you couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> add my webcam as a source, no matter what I did. Uninstalled, reinstalled drivers, uninstalled OBS or slobs, reinstalled slobs. Just couldn't get a camera. Immediately pulled it up in OBS Studio, and I haven't <laughs> went back since. I like this, and I want to use it yeah. because I like that feature. I I would use that all the time, but you know gotta have my camera <laughs> it's kind of important for I streaming. have to have my one of my basic <laughs> yeah. features of my yeah. stream i i've heard a lot of people who have the same issues you guys do where there's just some bizarre issue that they can't get fixed with stream Labs obs i'm fortunate enough that it doesn't really have any huge issues the only thing i've noticed is my alerts don't always work which is ironic because it's Streamlabs obs uh that's the whole point is the alerts <laughs> but, i had that happen too it just wouldn't get my yeah. alerts would stop working and it there was one day where i had i tweeted at them on stream i was like hey my alert stopped working and i'm thinking about it and they responded and they're like yeah here's all these crazy steps to go through to fix it <laughs> and then they had to do something on the back end to fix it i was like but it your things <laughs> working together <laughs> that's a lot of work <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, I just want to mention that because if you're the type of person who does make recordings while you're streaming, that could be really beneficial to you. I know a couple of people in the True Gaming Discord were thinking about switching back to slobs after hearing about this. Pretty cool feature. Um, last little bit of news here. This is just a rumor, but it came from one of our partners, so I want to touch on it. There are some talks about Twitch doing away with lifetime partnership inclusion and making it more of an upkeep process. So you, it, it, again, rumors it's all pretty vague but what it sounds like is that you would have to maintain your viewer average most notably to maintain partnership uh, among the other requirements there so what do you guys think about hearing this uh we are all affiliates here but I i'm sure like we've all thought about this idea of getting into partnership and just sitting there afterwards versus kind of using partnership as a step towards more uh sodomi i throw this to you first what do you think um, as you guys always know, the way I view it, partnership is an accomplishment. It's a contract. So, again, makes sense. Um, I think also it is kind of nice to have that little accountability for partners. But at the same time, it also kind of depends on like what the requirements are and like what they expect of a streamer. And also what kind of stream it is, too. Like If you have event streams, and if your event streams are event streams that pull in a lot of people, but they don't happen that often, like uh, AGDQ. <laughs> for example like you know does it count for how long is it for different people because everyone has different streaming situations not everyone's your typical like stream for six hours have a community yada 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 some people are like the true gaming channel they do news and um other shows and just a whole bunch of different like charity giveaways like i said it's not a daily stream and then you have things like geek sundry who do different shows it's like a tv channel almost with reruns and everything mm -hmm. constantly so I think adjusting it for each partner would make more sense versus just a blanket like, hey, everyone needs to keep over 75 viewers or else you're not partnered anymore. Bam. But I think they're going to go through it and kind of think, like they know what they're doing with their money. I'll say mm -hmm. I'll put it like that. I'm not, there's a reason I'm not working at Twitch, working with <laughs> partner stuff. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, MPI, what are your thoughts on partnership being a upkeep requirement? I think if they do it on an, an individual basis, that's the only way that it's going to go well because like Sodomi said you know sometimes you should only stream once a year once a month depending on what it's for like big organizations or like the true gaming channel you know we stream what three nights a week now and then we have the charity streams every now and again mm -hmm. it's not an always thing so i think if they want to start doing that maybe they should they, they're going to need to look at what those people do 
or what if it's it, like a nonprofit organization that streams, but maybe doesn't always get over 75 views, that should probably still be a purple checked mark channel because they're a company. Mm. We need to know that that is really that company. It's kind of like when was it DiGiorno for whatever reason was partnered on Twitch and they've never streamed that kind of thing should stay partnered or at least verified yeah. in some way. They but do have thing like Snoop Dogg too. Like Snoop Dogg yeah. like well, twice. so they have some in their partner kind of application system. They have a line in there on if you are already a prominent media figure or business or something, you can contact them. Uh, if basically if you've been following on a different platform already and you're moving to Twitch or establishing a Twitch presence, they'll accommodate that for certain people. So that's why I see Snoop Dogg and DiGiorno getting instantly partnered because obviously those are known quantities in right. the business world. So, yeah, but yeah, that's I an think... interesting point. If they do kind of make those requirements for these other channels, do they fall into that too? Or how does that kind of work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically. And I think it, it, as long as they just kind of keep it with each person individually, why they're going to be removed, I think that's good. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, aside from that, holding people accountable for what they do would also probably be a good way to, you know, <laughs> do these requirements for partners. Yeah. But yeah, that's I'm, another conversation. <laughs> this is actually a pretty hot topic um, that I've thought a lot of about because of how our partnership works with uh, True Gaming streamers. Mm -hmm. And we had some of our streamers talking in the stream key discord who are partners like Miss Hobo and All Fun about kind of like the pros and cons of a system like this. Um, Basically, I feel like it should be an upkeep because you see a lot of people on Twitch who have a partnership badge who it feels like they just kind of got the badge and stopped streaming. And mm -hmm. at that point, you know, it was really just to get the badge. <laughs> <laughs> so I think partnership should be something you have to upkeep personally. Um, and it should be not the end game for your stream, but like a tool for you to do more on your stream. And like maybe that means more business connections or um, just validation on kind of where you're going. So. Mm -hmm. But and also well, one thing yeah. I'll throw in there too. Um, the way I personally view it is that I don't care what anyone else is doing. I work focus on what I'm doing. So if people keep their partnership, cool, good for you. If they lose a partnership, sucks, man. Hope we get it back. But like, so for me personally, and I think every streamer should take this moat into the head too. Don't worry about what other people are doing. What's happening to other people? Focus on you first, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if you sit on Twitter and you like cry and whine about like why does part only get twenty viewers? I should be partnered too. Then why well, you should lose your partnership? I'm like I'd rather you keep your partnership. It's better for you, better for us, better for everybody. Because mm -hmm. it's not a limited number of partnerships. It's not like they're like okay, we're cap out at a hundred k, and we have to start killing people to like drop <laughs> under that. So we gotta <laughs> no. There's no like limit yeah. to partnerships right now. So. Like I said, focus on you, and that should be the main focus. That's the main part for it. If you're right. not a partner, don't worry about it. It doesn't affect you. Um, Techno in the chat said that this was just an idea proposed by Trouble Truck on Twitter. I don't actually know the origin of this. Again, I just heard it was a rumor. Even if it's just a theoretical discussion, I think it's still pretty interesting to talk about. So hopefully you guys have some thoughts on that. or We'll see if it actually is something that would be coming or just a thought. Either way, interesting discussion here. But let's jump into the calls. So quickly, let me explain how this all works, guys. Uh, if you want to call into the show, you can do so by typing exclamation point calls, which will put you into a waiting room. You need to wait in that waiting room until it's your turn to come onto the show. I will add you as a friend. Uh, if it's you up next, I'll move you into the on deck section, which means that you'll be on the next rotation after we get done with the current caller. Uh, if you can't call into the show for any reason, don't worry. You can still just add true gaming in the chat with your question. Just please don't be afraid to re-ask the question because the chat moves pretty quickly. So if it kind of floods out of there, you can always re-ask it if we didn't see it. Callers do get priority as a note there. The first of which is Manu A12, the brand new caller, uh, listener of the show. So I just said the friend request to Manu. And as soon as we get the confirmation, I'll add him onto the show here. I think he is at work, it sounds like. So I want to get him on here first. By the way, Millennium, thank you for the sub, man. Appreciate that. 11 months, very close to a year. All right. Manu, we are waiting for you, my man, to accept the friend request. I'll go ahead and add the others as well. We have three callers waiting in the call room. Uh, the Broke Blurred. Did I say that right? The, yeah, The Broke Blurred and British Avenger. <laughs> the, the weekly regular there. Manu, maybe, going to accept the friend request. There we go. Got it. Okay. Adding on to the show right now. Manu, hello? 
Hello? No? You there? <laughs> Could have issues. MPI Sonomi, can you guys hear him? Nope, not at all. Okay. Not a sound. I couldn't hear you guys talking, so I don't know if I lost all sound for a sec there. <laughs> no, no, no. All right. Manu might be having mic issues, sounds like. Yeah. he's on, They're on iPhone right now. Okay. All right. Manu, try to get your mic issues figured out. I will push you off the call for now. Um, but if you get those worked out, just come back into the waiting room, and I'll be happy to bring you back on the show. But let's go ahead and grab British Avenger next, who is our weekly caller here. <laughs> Always hey, got some Brit. good stuff. The Brit. Um, got to type his name in here to add him to the call. Okay, British Avenger. Let's see what he's got this week. British, you there? Yeah, hello. Hey, man, how's it going? I'm doing all right. How are you guys doing? Good. Thanks for calling in the show. What do you want to talk about this week, my man? So, um, at the moment, I can't have, like, a proper, like, schedule I can really keep to because um I'm signed up with a lot of agencies for jobs so like I with like each week I don't know when I'm going to have work or not so mm. like the schedule I have at the moment is like at like 7 p.m like night so like I know I probably won't have any work in fear of that but the problem is when I don't have work like by that time I'm kind of all out of NG and I kind of have no NG to stream. So it's like should I like stream early in the day? But there's always that chance I could have work that day. Hmm. Okay. So are you nervous to stream earlier because then you'll be out of energy to work? No, like when I'm not working like a day, when it gets to like the later night, like seven PM when like I put my schedule to stream. Mm -hmm. I'm like already at NG because it's near end of the day. Mm -hmm. But I'm worried about like if I stream earlier in the day, but I could have work on that day. Oh, I think I see what you're saying. I see what you're yeah. saying. So are you uh you said you're signed up with like agencies for jobs and things. How yeah. soon do you know when you're gonna work? Is it like they call you that morning and it's like, hey, we got a job for you today, or is it like you get kind of a weekly thing? It's either like like a day before normally. Okay. MPI you have thoughts. <laughs> well, I was just thinking because something that I do is um I post my schedule per week. So, like, if something, if I come on stream key, it, one of my streams moves a little bit. If I have something come up with, uh, like, editing and stuff outside of streaming and I have to get that done, then I'll, I'll say, hey, guys, I got to take a day off this week. And I try to post that every Sunday. So if it was something that you got to schedule weekly, you could do something like that. But if it's, like, the night before sometimes, that's tough. Yeah. Um, so. I, I mean, I would think you could schedule them for whatever time you you think is going to work best and then just stay in contact with people through social media and discord if something changes and try to reschedule if you can or maybe the night streams don't do as long of one you say you're kind of running out of energy maybe do a shorter stream so you can still at least stream when you want to mm -hmm. fair enough so domi your thoughts for british so brit question for you do you want to work like when i say work i mean like do you want to like with this, you want to put in a lot of effort for it. It's like daily effort. It'll work yeah. for you. Okay, perfect. So I wanted here. What you need to do, what you should do is find out a nice two to three hour window where you'll never be working and have that time dedicated to post what you're what you're going to do for that day. Daily schedule, update it daily. Be like, hey, I'm doing this today. We'll stream it this time. Or be like, hey, no stream today. I'm busy as hell. Or the next day, just daily schedule, post it, syndicate it. Send it everywhere. Let people know. And as soon as you do it every single day, get ready to make it for the next day. In fact, make a template. So this way you can just write it in as you know and just post it within that two to three hour window that you um, blocked out for posting that. And then you're good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think you're going to have to be able to work within your means, right? I mean, we can say on paper it's great to have a schedule weekly, right? But if practically you can't do that, then don't beat yourself up about that. I think... The best thing you can do in your situation is to kind of work with what days you can and the schedule that you can. 
So that might mean daily schedule updates, like these guys said, even like hours before. Um, you know, it's not ideal, but it's going to be the best possible situation that you have for yourself. And I think that's kind of all you can do, you know? Uh, British, do you have any other questions on that? Um, not really, but I have like one other question. Okay. Um, so the past days I've been kind of um, maybe experienced a bit of depression or like some mental health issues. Um, like sometimes I feel like I'm not doing quite, I guess, like my job as a streamer. And like sometimes, like I try to find excuses to end stream for some reason. Mm. And I don't know why. Maybe it's I need like a kind of a break from streaming or I need to just change something up with it. Mm. Yeah, you're looking for excuses to end your stream early, basically. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like that you're not really enjoying streaming, if if I'm understanding that right. Um, and maybe you enjoy parts of it, but like you get into it and you kind of are ready to be done earlier than you thought. I, I you called it in a couple weeks ago talking about how you feel like you could just stream forever, right? And you kind of thought about doing everyday schedule, and now you're kind of yeah. saying that it doesn't quite feel like that anymore. Am I hearing that right? Yeah, I think like. I did put in like one day of like having a day off. Then I kind of went back to like the like seven days a week. Mm -hmm. But it's like the past days I've been like, I guess you can say like really burnt out. Mm. Okay. For this MPI, because uh, I know you deal with a lot of mental health stuff in your stream. You're not a, you know, a therapist, but do you have thoughts on dealing with these kind of things? Yeah, um, so I was trying to find a, a post, actually, and I can't seem to find it right now, but there's a, a bigger partnered streamer who f focuses on mental health a lot like I do and actually um, was recently talking about going through something similar where they felt like they were kind of going through an imposter syndrome of I'm not doing enough for people on my stream, even though everyone around around you can be telling you differently of you know I, I come to your stream every day you make me feel better or you know you gave me this advice and really helped out and th this isn't an answer to your to your problem but more of a you're not the only person who feels that way you know that like i said this a partnered streamer huge influencer in the uh the mental health community on twitch and it it's something that i think all of us can go through not just you if that makes sense yeah and I know that, again, that's not advice, but it, it can help to know that you're not the only one going through those kind of feelings. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's no problem in stopping streaming if you're not feeling it that day. Whether it's just you feel sick, you feel tired, or you're just not having fun, it's fine to say, hey, today's not the day, and take a step back. Um, and maybe kind of evaluate why you had that that day. Why wasn't it fun? Or why did I feel like I wasn't enough this day? And then you can you can go forward from there and pick up again. Uh, and I think too many people put too much pressure on themselves that they have to stream every day no matter what. Or they're not going to grow. Or people are going to be upset about it. But you also have to take care of yourself. So if you're not happy, if you're not feeling it that day, that week, take a step back and that's okay. Gotcha. Yeah, good and words think, there. And when you come back from that too, it helps a lot because you'll have a ref you, you know, you'll be refreshed and people can tell when you're not enjoying your stream. If you're streaming and you are not not having it, people can tell cuz you're probably talking less, you're less energetic and you're just looking for a reason to stop and it comes across in your stream when you're not happy or not enjoying it and that takes viewers out of your stream and people won't want to come back. Mm -hmm. So if you feel yourself having that one day, just let people know, hey, I'm not I'm not doing okay today. I need a break. Take a step back and go at it again the next day. Right. Also, if you're streaming every single day, one day is not really that much of a break. So you might yeah, consider it's a longer really not. break there. Yeah, I I only do I do five days now, and even then one of them is ha basically half a day. So I do like four and a half days now. And some day, some weeks still I'm like, hey, who halfway through the week it's wednesday i am freaking tired 
Like I got all this stuff going on. I'm not going to stream today because I need to, you know, get chores done around the house or whatever. Or I have a dentist appointment. Sorry, I'm taking the whole day off because <laughs> it's easier for me to not s stress that. Oh well, the dentist is 30 minutes behind. Now my lunch is 30 minutes behind. Now streams 30 minutes behind. I'm like, you know what? It's fine. I have a dentist appointment. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> gotcha. So don't don't hesitate to take take those days when you need them, man. It's it. People always emphasis a lot on grind, grind, grind. And while I agree with that, you also have to take days off and rest. Mm -hmm. I think You're, you have to find your own personal schedule too, because there's so many different schedules on Twitch. Sure. I mean, you can do, you know, some in the morning, some at night. Take the lunch off, like some people do, or you go for mm -hmm. eight hours on four days a week, and there's just so many examples and you're only going to find that through experimenting and trying things yeah, out uh, for sure. Sodomi, you have thoughts. So one thing I'll say first off and foremost is pinpoint the parts you like about streaming, why you like them or why you like them and figure out if you still like them or what changed so that you didn't like them anymore, whether it's something with yourself, your personal life, with your time management, if it comes with like the working schedule, because I used to, I work retail right now and I did work it before. And when I was working all days, then like a half day, then all day, open a close, then a clopen. Yeah, I was like, I, I just want to sit down and lay down. I don't want to stream. I'm freaking tired, dude. So I've been there. I know. I know the feeling. But if you really want to stream and you want to like do that, pinpoint what you like about it and then go from there. Because you might realize, hey, you don't like streaming, but you like like talking to people, communicating people. That's what that's what I did. Mm -hmm. I figured I don't really like playing games on stream too much because honestly, video games. I like playing video games in my free time for fun, like comfy, just not talking to anybody. But I love talking to people. I love talking smack. I love not hearing my own voice. In case you guys didn't know, so figure out what you like, pinpoint that, and then try that out. Yeah, I think to go along with that too, trying to find the why in what you're streaming for is really important there. In terms of whether you just stream because it's fun, maybe you're streaming because a lot of other people are doing it and you feel like you should too. Or if you're actually looking to build something bigger than that, if you have like a mission behind what you're doing, kind of like MPI with the mental health thing, or if maybe you have something you're passionate about that you want to share with people. Uh, if you just like talking with people, like Sudomi said, then that doesn't necessitate playing games to do that. So kind of finding like the reason you're doing it in the first place, I think is crucial for finding the long-term energy to keep streaming. Uh, British, you have thoughts on any of that? Uh, not really. Cool, man. Well, thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. No problem. And, uh, British, I found that, uh, topic I was talking about and I put it in chat for you. So it doesn't directly, uh, you know, say word for word kind of what you're feeling, but it's very similar. So yeah. if, uh, if you have time, it might be worth giving it a read because, I said seeing a huge partnered streamer go through the same thing can really put it in perspective that you're not the only person that thinks that way. So yeah. I think, you, I think you're, you're doing good, man. But yeah, if you want to check it out, I, I finally found it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Check that out for sure. Also, you mentioned that you feel like you're not doing your job for people. I don't feel like you yeah. should feel like you owe viewers anything. Um, unless like you've promised to deliver something that I don't, they paid you for or something. But like, if you feel like you're obligated to stream, because someone demands it of you, then that's a bad place to be in, I think. Um, yeah, you don't owe them inch, dog. <laughs> yeah, so like, definitely look at that in particular and think why you feel that way and kind of wrestle with that for sure. When, like, I mean, like, I feel like not doing my job, it's like, I don't feel like streaming is, like, you know, a job I have to do. It. Like, I feel like I have to, like, you know, be a certain, I don't know, standard with, like, while I'm streaming. Hmm. Okay, and you feel like some days you're not living up to that standard you've set for yourself, yeah. sort of. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that could be just a matter of reevaluating what that standard is and why you've set it there. Um, and maybe trying to rethink about what your stream is going to be about. Um, and not like lowering the standard, but changing it and kind of changing how you think about your stream and what your brand and identity is with that. That's what I would say there. Cool, man. Thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. No problem. <laughs> see you next week. See you next week. Yeah. <laughs> see you next week. <laughs> All right, cool stuff. Uh, I think we have another caller in here, the broke blurred. Let me. Uh, I think I accept the friend. Yes, the broke blurred. Am I know that name? Perhaps. Yeah, it's Savage Voice. This is is that is, is that Savage? Savage, is that you? He's he's still ringing. Hang on. Oh, oh okay. There you go. 
Now you can ask. Sa Savage, is that you? Hello. Hello. What's up? Oh, is Savage? Hello. <laughs> How's Bloody it going, hell, man? Come on. Hello. Oh, can you? Oh, okay, there we go. I can hear Savage? you. Again. Yes, oh, you yes. Can stream. <laughs> okay, what's up, Shadomi? Sorry, I my, had my volume down. There you That's go. Okay, you got it up now, so we good. We good. <laughs> How's it going, man? <laughs> Hello. Okay, yeah. Um, no. Nah, uh, first, let me just say I listened to your show. Um, what? Yeah. Why am I hearing myself back? <laughs> Do you have the stream open? Uh, yeah, possibly. That might be why. Thank you for letting me know that. There you go. <laughs> uh. And there we go. All right. Cool. Now we're good. All right. Uh, yeah. One, love the show. Um, found, actually, this is how I found Sodomi. Um, I joined, uh, follow, I follow. I'm, I am the broke blurred for a reason. Uh, so I can't subscribe to anybody just yet. Um, but I followed Sodomi, and the information that you give, I think, is insanely valuable. Um, real quick, I started from podcasting, and I started that four months ago and eventually found my way here. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of it is, you know, looking and finding podcasts like this and YouTube videos here and there. Um, but one thing I've noticed, which I want your, you know, want to know what your opinion on it is, that I found that m one, more social media platforms need to be uh, like at least Twitch. Uh, what, you know, that's where I'm at now. Um, I was hesitant to come to Twitch. I was hesitant to use Discord. Um, I was here, had nothing happen, obviously, and just whatever. And then I was multi-streaming, and then uh, my actually a uh, friend of mine said, "You should come. Try coming back to Twitch. You know, we have a Discord. Join the Discord. We'll get you rolling." And fast forward uh, Friday, I have my re regular stream. Is like. 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we're, I'm not thinking anything of it. I'm just going, and, you know, I, I, I they ask me to sing sometimes, so I sing, like, I sing Baby Shark, because, you know, <laughs> it makes them happy, you know, whatever, because one guy said, if you do it, I'll sub, and it would have been my first actual sub since becoming affiliate. So I did it, and I'm playing my game, and then as I'm playing my game, um, I, this stuff's going on in the chat and I can't really look at the chat because if I stop moving, they'll kick me out of the game and penalize me for five minutes. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm coming guys. I'm coming. And they're just, they're screaming in the chat and I get in the chat and two guys, basically I had 74 followers. And even now I'm getting emotional thinking about it. Um, I had 74 followers, two guys between two guys. Uh, I now have 75 subscribers. Wow. All from that one stream. Uh, so this being, I, I've been on YouTube. I have all the social medias I have and I share my content. And the only thing I really ever really want, I like a like, a like is great, but hit the share button. You just hit that share button. If everybody on my Facebook friend list hit the share button once, yeah, I mean, come on, <laughs> we all know how many friends we all have on facebook at this moment if each one of those people shared our content we probably would all be in a better place but not too many people do that um and i think i don't know what you think as far as how this community is in comparison to other social media or, or what you found um in comparison i guess okay um is there like a certain area that you want to focus on in terms of how it's different than other social media well, how it can just be like, I think it's, it's has the potential and they're trying to make it way bigger. Like for instance, I think they are vying for a spot uh, next to YouTube um, with what the way they have, they're, they're doing the creator's dashboard and the video and stuff like that. And tags and all that is something that they have on YouTube, except here, there's more of a community that I don't think YouTube has or has the ability to be. So you take YouTube and you mix it with something like Facebook and you have now Twitch hmm. 2.0 or 3.0, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So you kind of want to focus on the community aspect of Twitch compared to a platform like YouTube, essentially? Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. So Domi, you want to start this one off? Uh, that thing that's just in the nature of the platform. Like, for instance, I can now be like, hey, chat, everyone post your favorite emote in chat. And it'll happen in less than... Five seconds, I guess, counting. 
So, like I said, it's because it's live content, the community is there, it's a lot easier. Um, with YouTube comments, it's a bigger platform, and there's not as much live content, and it's also a lot of passive content, I think, too. For just Twitch is more active watching. Like I said, more people in Twitch chat, like, I think more people talk in Twitch chat than people leave comments on YouTube, I think. Yeah, I, I would say yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think that's where it also comes from, just kind of how you have the instant interaction and people like instant gratification, people like being recognized. Let's say your favorite streamer out of a sea of a thousand messages reads just yours. You feel special, don't you? You feel good. You're like, oh, you read my message? Yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm here. Here. <laughs> Exactly. So yeah, um, I think the only way platformers would be able to get that is if they do exactly what Twitch is doing, the live content with real time, close enough real time to uh, interaction. Otherwise, I uh, don't really see the building community as much just because of how the medium works. And also, some people don't like that interaction. Some people like to sit down and type their responses out long form, like in Reddit or, um, I guess, Twitter, but that's a little <laughs> different altogether. <laughs> True. Okay. Uh, MPI, what do you think about the differences between Twitch and YouTube? Uh, I mean, like Sonomi said, you have the, the live interaction makes a huge difference. You actually create a connection with that streamer where a youtube comment is you type it they might type back they might not but on twitch you have chat you interact with them as it's happening versus that video came out five years ago and you're going to comment on it and be like thanks for the advice (laughs) so (laughs) it's it's much more of a connection and then even i think outside of twitch's website if you go through like twitter or facebook groups or different places like that there's that community goes to those sites too and you have like the twitch community on twitter where you interact (laughs) with other streamers based off their tweets because you have people that ask questions or they'll say hey i'm a partnered streamer with an average of 550 viewers here's how i got there and then they get to make a big thread and they help people out and i feel like the twitch community overall is more inviting than a lot of them that i've seen and been around uh Mm. youtube 90 percent of the comments that i read through have nothing to do with the video or they're just dumb (laughs) (laughs) like i don't know how many times i look at like a band's new song that comes out and then there's some people that are like great new song and then there's one guy that's like i like cats (laughs) cool that had nothing to do with anything (laughs) what why did this happen so I just feel like the the Twitch community is a lot more welcoming and brings people in with open arms where a lot of the other places kind of try to almost gatekeep some of the communities and they they have like the top tier people and then everybody else almost feels like there's no reason to be there. Mm-hmm. And then obviously you have Facebook where it's Facebook and mm. okay sometimes, but most of the time it's not as great especially if you read comments on like news articles <laughs> where on Twitch, a news article could pop up if they had an area and people would just be like, this is going to help my stream so much, or here's how I like this, things like that. So, yeah, I don't I think there's pros and cons to both platforms. I think oh, the yeah. live stuff obviously is huge um, for a couple of reasons. One is that it's like on YouTube, you pretty much just create a video and, and shoot it out there and people watch it after the fact. Whereas in a live setting, you're, creating the content with the viewer in real time. So that's just much more engaging. And that's why you see a lot of new live content surfacing. And I think you'll see more of that start happening even with like movies and things eventually, because it's just more of an engaged viewer experience. Uh, so you feel closer to the thing happening. Mm-hmm. I think there are instances of the opposite on Twitch though. Like if you look at some of the high end channels, those are still channels where like, yes, there's a chat, but chat engagement tends to be kind of low. I mean, you could say maybe the the viewers in that chat interact with each other, but some of these really top streamers, there's not a whole lot of individual chat interaction as much as just like a hype factor or something or just uh, excitement about an event happening. So I think that stuff's really cool still though, um, that you can be a part of these big events and the community aspect is hard to deny on Twitch. Uh, that's kind of the whole selling point when you go to TwitchCon and things like that is focusing on the community and everything they've created. So I think there's definitely stuff to learn there, but I think Twitch also can learn a lot from YouTube. And we still talk about issues with like discoverability on the platform, um, whereas YouTube's a lot better for that. Even going back to like podcasts, like you said, uh, you probably found this podcast by searching for us in the directory, whereas it'd be much harder to find the Twitch stream of this. 
uh, versus the podcast. So there's definitely ways to be improved. I know you focused on the community, but there's a lot more to social media than just that. Um, so I don't know, there's a lot of things to unpack there, but do you have any thoughts to add there? Um, no, what did, well, I also found the people I've met in this community are the same ones who now are sharing my stuff in the other social communities. Mm. So I think that's just an interesting thing. Um, but no, you know, you're, I, I, I agree with basically everything you guys said. Um, and it was just more of an observation because like I said, I, I did all the other social medias. I put out the content and I don't, I don't expect anything from anybody. I just kind of want them to enjoy it and hopefully good things happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and to find it happen so easily in comparison here and so quickly, cause I've only been streaming for like uh, maybe one and a half months or so. And I'm, I'm an older, well, for me, I, I, I feel like I'm an older, I'm 39. Like I know Sodomi likes the, 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 you know, the idea of older streamers and wanting to know how that works for us. Uh, cause we're not, you know, we're not young. We haven't, you know, I've been gaming since I was a kid, but still I haven't been in it like I am now until recently. Um, and it just, I like it. And I just want to bring that to the light that people should know there's something really different about this that I think can make it as big as all the other platforms. Like right now it's more of a niche thing in my opinion, where people don't necessarily know, unless you're one of us, you don't really know to go there. Mm -hmm. Whereas Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, YouTube, everybody just like nothing. And people may know Twitch, but they don't know what the hell it is. They'll think it's the same thing as Twitter sometimes. Right. Yeah. I think yeah. there's some interesting parts there. One is that, Yes, I think like this format has the potential to hit a lot of people, but the issue with Twitch is they are kind of locked into the gaming niche right now. They're trying to break out of it a little bit with some of their content, but it's going to be hard to hit the same mass appeal as YouTube and Facebook, um, which are just sort of general social media at this site versus Twitch, which is pretty locked into the gaming demographic. And they could break out of that, but honestly, I think it would almost be to their damage to do that because they're so entwined with gaming culture that I don't know they need to get to the same level as YouTube in terms of just sheer mass engagement. I mean, the numbers on Twitch are still huge, but they're not YouTube huge. That's what I'm hitting at here. And I think that's okay. Um, we might see them try and shift beyond just gaming, but it's going to be hard to do that without damaging the brand, I think. Uh, Sodomi, your thoughts? So kind of going into the whole like Twitch is like for for gamers for us people who know about twitch it's big but for everyone else like i tell people what i do sometimes and they're like what is that and i tell them listen i have, I have a live tv show that goes online on the internet and they're like oh okay so <laughs> i think definitely the key to bridging that gap is the, the generational gap is kind is that that share button like you were saying earlier uh bird so yeah focusing on that and just kind of trying to make it appeal to people kind of get an easier way to explain it like get a five second explanation so it's like yeah you know obviously easy yeah well i see i know how to do it because yeah. i'm used to it but i'm just saying that in general people don't know and i and in all honesty like i agree that it is a good thing if it stays relatively a niche because i don't like the politicians thing no that's not good mm -hmm. none, none of that's see? good that's yeah. stay away but i don't think short of the politician side of things because of who now owns it. I don't think we necessarily have as much of a choice as I think that is maybe most likely where Amazon or Bezos wants it to go. Like, I think that's part of the reason why it was purchased. Yes, for the niche, but I can use that niche to make it something bigger. I can use something that's already there and just expand on it for very little cost. That's all it would be. It's not, doesn't cost them anything to basically expand to that. They basically, we're going to do it. They need us to do it. It's basically what I'm saying. They let us do it and then they capitalize on it and it doesn't truly cost them anything. Yeah, I, it could happen. It's hard to tell. Um, I don't think they, I mean, they make basic updates to Twitch in terms of like, you know, we talked about the dashboard and all that. And technically that benefits all types of content, but I, we just haven't seen a lot of cases of non-gaming content taking off on Twitch yet. Besides, I mean, podcasts kind of, but a lot of those podcasts still kind of are in the gaming space or have some sort of connection. So 
I don't know. We're going to have to see some sort of breakout content for that to start happening, I think. Um, and I just don't know what that'll look like. MPI, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, I don't know if they necessarily want to shift it more to be that like a huge catch-all for content as much as gaming is growing and getting bigger all the time. And we see so many companies investing in it and we see like NBA teams owning esports organizations or NFL teams owning esports organizations and actually like incorporating them into their their organization as an NFL team. So I think it could be more they just saw gaming is going to get bigger and bigger and we're going to make money off of gaming. Mm -hmm. And if we can throw some other stuff on there too while we're at it, great, let's do it. But I think I think they're going to want to leave Twitch mostly gaming because mm -hmm. they know that's what it is, that's what it has been and will be, and there is money to be made in esports and gaming cre content creation overall. Yeah, I agree, especially as these things continue to grow and, you know, the the demographics start aging up, the people who played games as kids start getting older. Um, and suddenly that older generation is more into video games and things like that. I think we'll just see the audience keep rising for a long time until we hit that kind of end of life point with gamers. Mm -hmm. um, so don't wait, anything else to add on this one? Uh, no, I think MPI hit it round the head. Cool. Uh, how about uh, Broke Blurred? Anything else to add? Uh, no, you can just call me Savage Voice. That was <laughs> Savage, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gotcha, cool, man. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's the title. I'm the person. Yeah, gotcha. two different things. Um, no, <laughs> you, you guys. I just want to say you guys are great. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, I'm catching up slowly, but anytime <laughs> there's a new one on, if I see it, I listen just because as someone who's trying to do this as a serious business, you know, I'm starting late. So my mindset is I'm at, I'm, I'm at a where it's like this is you have to do this seriously and take it seriously and grind mm -hmm. and do the proper things. You need to get any information you can get and between news, techniques, ideas, that's very valuable. So anybody who's listening to this, if you do want to do this seriously, take heed, listen, learn everywhere, but definitely learn here because this they're, they're dropping some knowledge. You're going to get something good out of this, this content. So that, that's it. Thank you for having me, you know Heart was palpitating before I started, <laughs> which is the weirdest thing because I do my own podcast. And I don't even have a camera on me. So, right. but I, I truly respect you guys. And I, I, I want to thank you so much for, for allowing me to be on here. Awesome, man. Thank you for supporting the show and thank you for calling in. We hope My we pleasure. can uh, keep making good stuff for you. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> I'll see you later, man. <laughs> later. Take care, brother. Bye. All right. I think that's all the callers we have right now. So we'll jump back into questions for a bit. Again, guys, if you asked a question earlier and it got flooded out, feel free to re-ask if you want to because chat's been moving. I'm going to jump back a little bit to see if I missed any. Um, so Lady Ice Dragoness asked earlier, what do you think, going back on the Streamlabs topic, what do you think about, rolling out, uh, about them rolling out a subscription service? So if you guys didn't see this, this was Streamlabs Prime, which I think gets you the creator site on Streamlabs, if I remember correctly. Um, as well as maybe some other perks there. Uh, did you guys have a chance to see this earlier this year? MPI, Sodomi? Sodomi did? Yeah, I looked at it a bit. I, I honestly, I was not surprised at all. I was, I was waiting for that to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of makes sense um, because they kind of borrowed the same wording from, you know, Amazon Prime, Streamlabs Prime, fits into that ecosystem. Do you have thoughts on it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, um, you mean um, them integrating it or the system itself or just both? Or just in general? Um, both, I'll but both, both. kind of like, the, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they had too much reach. Like, that was, that was money on the table because they were giving out way too much for free. Well, I'm not saying they were giving out too much for free, but mm -hmm. there's so much money left on the table. And like right. I said, so even with the merch shop and all that stuff, that's a basically free for in beta testing. Now it's like a permanent, like, paid feature. Uh, um, the creator sites, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's something that if you want to look into as an option, it's an option. If you use Streamlabs still um, in its base form, if it works for you, it works for you. If you want the extra options, do the extra options. Again, y'all know how I feel. It's a tool. I like having a thousand tools, If you, even if I only use a screwdriver and the hammer. So, yeah. Otherwise, I think if you want to use it, use it. 
So just to recap a little bit, because I had to kind of refresh my brain on what's in this. Uh, the big things for Streamlabs Prime are you get the creator site, which is you know your own website and some people too. It has all your social media and stream. Um, you get like certain special themes in Streamlabs OBS, which I imagine is not that attractive for people. Um, and then you also, this is interesting, is the merch store. Now you have to have the Prime subscription to use it. Um, I think the the trade off was that the price of merch went down overall, but now it used to be that anyone could just create their own free branded merch for through Streamlabs. Now you have to have Prime to do it, and I think those are most of the benefits. It says like mobile streaming too, but I think you can still do that without having Prime. So, uh, MPI, do you have any thoughts on uh, Streamlabs Prime? Uh, I I kind of agree with Sodomi. It's it's a tool, and if if you look at it and these things will benefit you or you need like a custom domain website, I mean, that honestly kind of alone is, is a pretty good deal. 12 bucks a month for your Mm -hmm. own domain. Uh, Looking at most of the other ones, just from building my portfolio website, they were more expensive than that alone. Um, The one thing that kind of I look at it is like, if you're going to do it just for the overlay and widgets, I don't know that it would be worth it as much because you're not getting something custom from there. You're getting a template that exists already. Yeah. But if you use any of these apps like Pretzel Music Player and you use more than one of those, I think those are like five bucks a a month alone, some of those subscriptions. So if you use two of those, spend the extra, you know, three dollars and get the prime sub. Um, There's not a whole lot in it that I would use. So I don't Mm -hmm. think I would get the subscription myself. But if you use any of these things, I mean, it seems like a pretty good price to me. Uh, I know their merch store, when I tried it, I didn't really like it. I felt like everything was very expensive uh, compared to a lot of the other t-shirt creating websites and things. And a lot of those now have their their integration into Twitch as well. Like I use Teespring and I have an integration to Twitch. So when Streamlabs was the only one with an integration to Twitch, it was good, but now I think as much as you have to charge for the merch on there, it's uh, I don't think it's the best merch option. Mm-hmm. So if you're considering a merch store and that's the only thing you're looking at in the Prime, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, it seems like um, looking at some more of Lady's comments, said that the overlays are included in the Prime sub, so she can't use an overlay on her stream. But I, that must just be the built-in overlays and themes because I know you can still create your own. Uh, overlay or use your own so and i think the reason she asked this initially was she was thinking of switching away from it because of prime personally i don't think prime is a big deal if you use streamlabs obs like you're not going to be missing out on key features if you don't get prime um so I, if you like the software i think you still use it if you want to create your own website or use their merch I, maybe you want to get the prime but um i actually don't know anyone who's gotten it do you sadomi nah I haven't heard anyone like talk about it, like talk about it to use it. Um, but then there's someone out there who has, who finds value in it. Mm-hmm. I'm sure also probably would have pulled it already. And even it's one of those things where it's like, I'm sure even they don't get as much people as they, as many uh, conversions as they want. They still are huge in the streaming like world. Like yeah. a lot of people use stream labs. So they're going to get trickled down users at some point. For sure. More than zero. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So for them, it, it's a plus. Cause they also, they also take a cut off of the, uh, all streamer donations too through Streamlabs. So right, that's a that's the majority of the revenue, I believe. Yeah. So yeah. as a and I think this is also kind of building your own uh, build your own land, so to speak. Because <laughs> if well, let's say a streamer gets banned off uh, Twitch, that's one income source. They're gone, and say someone just stops streaming or someone doesn't get as many donations. That that's a wildly fluctuating income source. Mm-hmm. Right there, you can't control that whatsoever. And uh, trying to account for it's probably just a lost cause. So building something on your own land from a business perspective is always a good idea. Right, it's something you can control. You're not kind of at the mercy of other platforms for your money. <laughs> That's yeah. a good point. Okay, so moving on here, <laughs> I have to ask this one. All right, so Heathom in the chat asks, "Do you think old people should have their own category?" And by old people, I mean people over thirty. So. uh for this to you guys <laughs> just straight off the bat uh mpi Wait, Ian, how old are you <laughs> i'm 26 so i'm i guess yeah. i'm not old technically but if you're 30 year old <laughs> or you're you're an old person according to he uh oh, mpi what do you think about this one um 
I, I'm going to go with no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't see the benefit or, I guess, detriment of either way. I, I, I feel like the detriment would more, more be, why do I care? Like, why, why yeah. would I go to that category and be worried about it, I guess? <laughs> I, I definitely would like more context on this one because I'm not sure what the benefit is. I feel like we're all going to answer pretty uh, clearly. No need for that. So, uh, so, so, so the way I feel about that is having a tag for it would be cool, I guess, but you don't need a new category for it because... What, what it though? Who's going to use old what's tag? What's the tag going to do? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it, would, it wouldn't be old tag. It would be like... It would be... Now, I think... Actually, I think a better way to implement that and because when someone gives me someone gives me something like that, uh, an idea instead of going like, no, I shouldn't do that. I'm like, okay, how can we actually make it so I would use it? I think maybe putting like parenting or parents would be a good one. So maybe like, because there's some parent people on Twitch who are parents who do mm-hmm. talk about their children in chat who are more family friendly or kind of have that family atmosphere about it. So maybe something along that atmosphere. But when it comes to age, there is this one thing cool thing about the internet. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, Asian, tall, short, a, a triangle, a dog, 50, 60, 70, 10. Well, can't be 10 on Twitch, but it doesn't really matter how old you are. As long as you make good stuff, right. you'll, I think, you'll find an audience. I think that's kind of what he was getting at. He adds more info, he said. I feel like some streams are too young for me. Uh, old people like me is what he's saying because he's 32. <laughs> so I think what he's trying to say is like maybe more options for different demographics like that maybe not just old tag or old person tag, but like parenting stream or something like you were saying or other tags because i think that is true i think you do kind of gravitate towards people that are more similar to you and i have seen that you know if you stream your kids are around it seems like people who have their own kids are more receptive to that type of content than people who are younger and just aren't in the age to have kids so i yeah. could see a benefit there it, I, again i wouldn't call it tag old person <laughs> maybe no, put something i think, I think a better tag name for it, you don't want to use mature because mature yeah. has um nsfw connotations towards it mm-hmm. so something along the lines of uh such as it's hard to say i mean it takes yeah. some brainstorming <laughs> i agree yeah. with that it's like you need something that's searchable it also yeah. makes sense Do you don't want to say adult because again adult has nsw yeah. connotations to it i don't know it's tough to gate that i guess but there could be some world where you could build out a system like that. I don't know. It would take some brainstorming, yeah. I think. I don't know. Or maybe would... even a streamer profile might actually work. <laughs> That's and, actually that might be better. Is like <laughs> if you go to the channel and it's like they have a profile under them that's like this is who I am, this is what I like. But you can already do that. Like I have an about me section in my channel, so right. even you if can't, I'm not like, live, you can it. read that and kind of get a, an idea of what I want to come back here when this person is live. Hmm. Yeah, so you, you can't. It's not filtered into the platform, though. If you put it right, in about yeah. me, I think is yeah. the argument uh, there. Hmm. So one thing I wish they could super beneficial. Hmm. One thing I think me. would work is if you put it, um, because right now on the mobile site, uh, last time I checked the mobile site, you have to change tabs to go to the about me section. But Probably. I think maybe like instead of where Twitch chat is, you have like a quick, um, if you're doing it in in landscape, landscape, it's landscape, mobile, yeah. Mm-hmm. mobile, yeah, vertical, <laughs> um. Something up under the under the under the stream, but above chat, where it's like a very small like Twitter like one forty character quip about you, about me, where you could put the information like, hey, I'm X X and Y, I stream you to do, I am X years old. If you want to put that in there, because mm-hmm. right now, if you're browsing streams on uh, mobile or console, you just kind of you don't get that about me. You have to go look for that about me mm-hmm. somewhere, and you can't. I don't think you even see it on a. Uh, console and like tv yeah, i'm not sure if you can applications yeah so i think having something like that would be a better way to do it and this way you kind of get like a profile like hey i am a person from wichita kansas it's your or, elevator hey. pitch right yeah or even just meme it up just be like you know yeah it's out for harambe or something just whatever you want to put in there <laughs> there you go <laughs> so to go on the other side of this he says he wants to filter out everyone under 30 you wouldn't be able to watch this show. Hey, good point. Because Green's 26, <laughs> oh. I'm 26. Sadomi, how old are you? 25. See, we wouldn't be able to watch the show. But so filtering out people based on age isn't always the best way to do it. I have people in my community that are 
you know, everywhere from 17 years old up to in their mid forties. And those are some of the best friends I have in the world. And we are (laughs) vastly different in age, but we have similar interests. Mm -hmm. So I think immediately going in and saying, I don't want to watch any stream if people are under or above (laughs) X age is get these old people out of my feed. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and to me, that's the exact same thing as saying, like, I don't want to see any black people in my feed. Oh, God. Exact. Exact Yikes. same thing. Exact same <laughs> it thing. It is, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, ultimately, there may be some way you could do that heed, but I don't think it would be by adding an old fart t- category on <laughs> Twitch, <laughs> which I think people yeah. would use sarcastically. But Yeah, I anyway. don't think anyone would actually use no. it. Wow. It, wow. It's already uh, 1248. I didn't realize it was so late. Um, so guys, now is last call for questions and calls. If you want to get your stuff answered, I'm going to try to quickly move through the questions we have here in chat in the last, uh, 12 minutes or so. E Riddler asked, do you think the sub only stream mode is a good feature? I feel like this is a bit of a feature that hardly gets used. <laughs> so you might've missed our discussions on this in the past Riddler, but, uh, we can revisit it. So sub only streams question. Have you guys seen anyone use this feature at all since launch? I don't think so. I haven't seen a single person use it. So don't we have you? I'm not sub. I'm not subs enough people to see it. Well, you can <laughs> yeah, still I see them in the directory. That's, <laughs> that's the thing. Even if you can go through the directory and see that a stream is live, it'll just say sub only. I haven't seen even that. Yeah. So I, th- I think because no one has really had a mixture of the creativity and the balls to do it, <laughs> because okay, what you think people are going to be like, oh, why do I have to pay to watch your content? When, when honestly you could be like i mean a comedian charges door tickets for a show there's so, no difference for that what do you think about the feature yourself overall do you think it is something people should use more or is there a reason it's not getting used mpi knows what i'm about to say don't you say it <laughs> it's a tool <laughs> it's a tool like i said if if it's a that to me is a it's a jackhammer maybe i don't need to break new ground yet but when I do need it, boom, I'm going to use it. Fair like enough. Said, I'm not against tools. I'm never against tools. I will take more tools. Do you see a scenario in which you would use it potentially? Yep. Anything you can think of? So if I'm ever, so I was thinking of multiple situations actually, because I love thinking about this one. <laughs> um, I was going to do pr- either private like coaching sessions, which would be on a sub stream. So you could like look in hmm. if you're sub there as well. Or even if I, in the future, decide to do some stand-up routine. Do it there and then premiere it um, elsewhere outside of Twitch like a week later mm-hmm. or something. So, boom, right there. Pretty much, it's think of it as the same thing as Patreon videos. That's the same thing as Patreon videos. Say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, if you put it on Patreon, you can put it a sub only. This is a live version. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, MPK, what do you think about sub only streams? Is there some world you see using them? I can see using them. Like Sodomi said, if it's something very special like stand up or if like people for some reason love twitch things even though people cannot sing to save their lives <laughs> uh if you do something like that as a you you know this week it's live for subs and next week it'll be on uh youtube so you can watch the vod later um i can see something like that or if you want to do sub nights where you give it as like once a month maybe Say, hey, if you're subscribed, the last Sunday of every month, we do a stream for you that you can play games and you can watch only if you're a subscriber. I can see special events and things maybe being worth it. Or if you're doing giveaways, Mm -hmm. um, saying like, it's a sub, sorry, it's a sub only giveaway, or better really is a follower only giveaway and putting on follower only mode in chat. And because you can change how long someone would have had to follow to enter the giveaway. Uh, but it's not something that I would do like, you know, every single day or every week. I don't think it's that sure. kind of thing, but I think it was rolled out for special occasions and like bigger, bigger streamers doing special events. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it's made for. But when it rolled out, you had the group of people that said, well, I'll sub only every stream and I'll make yep. all this money. And everybody told them that's a terrible idea. No one will watch any of your streams anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Riddler, I'm not sure if you saw the initial rollout of this feature, but it was met with a lot of laughing, basically. Uh, people saying that you'd just be shooting yourself in the foot by using this feature because people would just know that you want money. And that's basically it with streaming. 
And so I think because of that, people have been kind of scared to use it. But I think like these guys have said, there is uh, there are some scenarios where you could use it effectively. It's just a matter of choosing the right time because obviously when you're demanding money to watch your content, your content better be pretty good to warrant mm-hmm. that. So. Fair. I yeah, think fair. if you're going to do it, being like very open about it and talking about it a lot is a good thing. Like, hey, as a reminder, as a subscriber, once per month, you get this one special day that's only for you. But every, you know, the 30 other days of the month, mm-hmm. anybody can come in here and hang out and watch. But if you care enough to have that one special day, you can subscribe and you can come hang out with us that day. Right. So I okay. think if you're just open with it, it's good. Absolutely. Sorry, we're getting near the end of the show. We have like four more questions left. And I'm going to try and go through them fast. So let's do condensed answers for these last four because I want to get everyone's questions answered. Uh, gotcha. Striker87x says, any advice for streaming in IRL and doing it safely? Okay, so Domi, thoughts on IRL streaming? Uh, Don't. No, I'm kidding. Uh, do it. Just don't like be stupid. Like people, every people have rights. People have like feelings. Don't be all in someone's face. Don't record people without their consent. That is illegal in so many states. Mm-hmm. And whatever you, what you control in your stream is your stream. Don't get pissy if you get banned because someone decided to just whip out a titty or something. Don't. That's that's the, that's that's the risk you take. So be be smart with it. Might happen. Gotcha. MPI thoughts on uh, IRL streaming safety. Yeah, um, I mean, I I kind of agree with what Sadomi said. You know, part of it is going to be a risk that people are going to jump in and think they're funny and you know say a word or do something they shouldn't be doing, and you're going to get you're the one that's going to get banned for it because that's you know that's Twitch's terms of service. Is your mm-hmm. stream is your responsibility, um, and I think too from that kind of just make sure you're being mindful of your surroundings. Don't hold your phone out and just walk into the street or something like that. Pay attention to what you're doing. And people that are watching an IRL stream, if you're outside, understand that Mm -hmm. they know that you're going to have to look away from chat because you have to cross the street and not get hit by a car. So don't, don't think that the stream takes precedence over your safety walking around or like Sodomi said, other people's safety. Don't impede other people because you think it's funny to stand in the middle of the street or to, Mm -hmm throw a drink at someone or whatever don't do stupid things for content yeah in general this is in general whether you are irl or at home don't do stupid things just for the sake of content like break a keyboard on your head also Um, do not drive while streaming i've seen so many stupid bands from this recently so don't do that it's a bad idea yeah and last tip too if you're streaming to angles don't put any street signs or anything and don't stream within five miles of your house unless you've already scoped out the area Right. Yeah. It might be worth looking at vlogs instead of IRL streaming. <laughs> there you, you go. You can edit things out. All right. I got to keep moving quickly here because we're running out of time. Uh, Iculus HFB said, is it a violation to multi stream to Mixer and Twitch in their TOS? If you're an affiliate, you're yes. Affiliate. <laughs> and that's all we're going to say about that. <laughs> all right. Uh, Dat Glass says, curious if you have any thoughts on creative streamers and how we can do better on the platform or if maybe twitch isn't the right place for it Ooh, good question syndicate MPI? your content okay post it on instagram post it on twitter do quick speed paints on youtube take your take your vibes from twitch speed it up put that oh put it on youtube like put some don't music put behind it, it too okay what do you think about twitch in particular because that's sort of always hitting on here twitch should not be your only platform if you do that is just you you, you don't that's no no, but Twitch I think is not your for, only platform. I do think for the live streaming side of creative, this is the place to be. Yes, mm. agreed, absolutely. And okay. uh, there's a lot of uh, creative partner or Twitch partner stream or true partner streamers. <laughs> well, the words would get hard. Uh, <laughs> Gamer Dad, Impending Duff, Ma Run. Um, check out Susie. their streams. And Susie, oh yeah, I forgot she moved to creative and she's amazing at it. Um, <laughs> check all those people out if you need help with creative stuff. They are geniuses. There's a lot of cool people there. I think. Real quick, I would add that you should try out other platforms for creative streaming. I think Twitch is good, but the problem is it's, again, so tied into the gaming space that you might find more success with YouTube or Facebook. I wouldn't count those out, particularly with creative things. But Twitch is not bad, especially for monetization, if that's important to you. Mm-hmm. So, last question here. I'm going to jump on to FuryLN. said, I feel like my content is getting a bit repetitive. What are some ways to play the same game but bring some variety to the stream? Like maybe discussing topics during stream or I don't know. So how do you keep playing the same game, but keep it more 
I mean, add more variety and interestingness to the stream. Sodomi, thoughts? Figure out if your stream is about the game about or about something else. Because every stream has one thing it focuses on. Um, like my stream focuses on my point of view of things. And I just have Rockley in the background because it's interesting. And it's like easy for me to talk while playing that. So because I know that, I just put on Rocket League. And if not, I'll play Magic and talk about some stuff. I'll, sh- I'll talk my mess. I'll keep it moving. And again, just keeping it fresh is like keeping it, like read books, read articles, like find news, like find something you're passionate about and like read about it, talk about it, like expand your mind. Like don't, don't just be like playing this game and just focus on just that game. Do other stuff to get your mind working in other different ways. Because if you don't think this will help you one way, it'll unlock a gear in your brain to think about something else in another way later on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. gotcha mpi thoughts i like what you said figure out what the stream is about is a stream focused on the game because you're good at the game and you like it or is it focused more on you as an individual and your personality if it's more on you and your personality maybe it's worth trying another game because you're getting stale because of the game uh if it's about the game i would say like sodomi said find topics to talk about whether it's uh news about the game or lore about the game i know like uh die bear uh streamer who does destiny reads lore on her stream to people <laughs> and from destiny and is like deep in the destiny world so get a little deeper in the game if you can um if you can't do things like that maybe throw some games in with it like um like movies explained badly or games explained badly we did that during my stream yesterday because i was in long queues for dead by daylight and we would just in chat, people would put a bad explanation of a video game and we'd try to guess what it was. And chat was moving trying to guess those things. Mm-hmm. So throw something fun in there for your chat too, instead of just playing the game and talking about what you're doing in the game. If you play it all the time, like Sodomi said, Rocket League's something he can play and just talk and not even have to think about the game. It's muscle memory for him. Mm-hmm. So I would find more topics to talk about or even say you know we're going to talk about this new movie today on on stream while i play this game in the background and focus on that that day Mm -hmm. so in the in the chat he said is actually crunker is the game which is an fps game i think i saw someone playing this when i was reviewing apps um he said i run a lot of custom game modes and play with viewers all the time but even those can get repetitive so my question that i would have for you is are you personally bored by your content in terms of like what you're playing or do you only feel like people will get bored watching it because if you're bored doing this stuff, then you definitely need to make a big change and find something Mm -hmm. that excites you. But if you love what you're doing and you're just worried about people not being interested in it, then you just have to find ways to make it more exciting for people by being more expressive or making more content around it. Or um, you you make guides and things and you mentioned viewer games you're doing already. You could do highlights from those or more tournament type things. Um, So it's all a matter of like how you feel about the game and streaming it. Because I think you can make anything work if you're passionate enough about it. But if the passion is not there, then you got to change it up and find something new. And that could be an entirely new game. Especially because I think Crunker isn't that dep- that deep of a game compared to other games out there. So that may not mm. be the game for you if that's the case. But I think another thing, too, that could be beneficial is don't be afraid to ask for feedback. It's, yeah. if, if you could do this just in your mod team, that's kind of where I focus my feedback is with my mods. Is I'm like, hey... This is what I've been feeling lately. Am I just like, am I getting too deep in my head or are you seeing it too? And if so, can you can you maybe shoot some ideas with me and kind of like bounce back and forth ideas? Because that can help sometimes like verbalizing what you're feeling and mm-hmm. getting feedback from people can be extremely beneficial, I think. That was my thought at first, but the problem is you have to have people who are going to be honest with you because I feel like a lot of times if you ask people for feedback they're just going to say you're doing everything fine, right? Oh, I love oh, it. Yeah. It's great. It's what you've always Very done. True. It's always the same. But really, you're asking, like, how can I take this to the next level? But the person mm. who's watching you forever just wants to keep watching the same thing, probably. So you may not want to take that feedback. But if it's like a close friend or maybe like a very trusted mod who will be honest with you and critical with you, then that could be beneficial. It's just finding the right people can be difficult there sometimes. That's true. Yeah, I definitely keep mine with my mods because I know all of them will straight up tell me and say, hey, you suck <laughs> mm-hmm. if I'm sucking. They'll be real with me. Yeah. So I know I'm some streamers who, if that. they would ask that, their chat would just be like, yeah, it's great. What are you talking about? I don't know you're talking And mm-hmm. then really, like, the content could use some work, but they're right. just not going to get that feedback from viewers and some mods. 
So. There's a also if you're a Reddit user, something that I found the other day is I have to I'll have to find it on the exact subreddit. But there was a a uh, feedback post made on like one of the live streaming subreddits, mm -hmm. and it was it asks you to to review someone else's stream, and then you can post yours and clips and things, and then you kind of get an unbiased opinion. I think because those aren't necessarily your viewers, they aren't your friends. They're someone else who streams and could see a problem that maybe you don't see. Yeah, peer review is really cool. If you find one other person to do, like you exchange reviews for streams, that could be really cool too. Again, gotta find the right person for it though. You don't want someone who's just gonna rip your stream apart and not tell you anything helpful, or someone who's right. gonna say nothing's wrong, you know? Um, right. So anyway, good topic. Fury, sounds like you have been thinking through some of that yourself based on what you said in chat, so hopefully you can work that out. Thank you guys for all the questions and calls this week. This ended up being a really good show, so I'm really excited about this. Vel will be back next week, so stay tuned. And I think we'll have uh, Go Getter Greg on Monday. We'll be coming back. But uh, really quickly, let's kind of wrap up here. MPI, do you want to say a little sign-off blurb for people on where they can find you and all that? Yeah, uh, you guys can find me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram under Mr. Pure Instinct. Uh, we stream five days a week. Monday is 12 to 5 Central. Uh, Tuesday through Friday is splits morning from 8 to 11. We play a fun multiplayer game of some kind. And then um, from 1 to 5 Central, we play whatever story-based game we're playing at the time. Uh, right now during October, if you like Halloween, you like horror, definitely the place to be. We play a lot of <laughs> horror games. We've got Halloween masks. All the alerts are horror-themed. You can scare me with alerts and laugh at me. So if you're into that kind of stuff, it's the place to be for sure. Um, we also talk about mental health a lot, so that's something that can happen in my chat. If you come in, just be prepared. Sometimes chat can get a little real. <laughs> awesome. Go check him out, guys. Uh, also, Sodomi, you want a little sign off as well? Perfect. Everyone, I, everyone my name has been Sodomi. It's been great being here on the ugh, Stream Key Podcast. <laughs> you can find me at Sodomi on all major platforms, Instagram, Mixer, Twitter, Twitch, Discord, and TikTok now because I'm getting into that. <laughs> or if you're lazy and you're in Twitch chat, I'll post my streamer links in the bottom and click that. Get links to all of my special channels. Uh, the Perspective Podcast will be launching pretty soon. The podcast I host. Again, we had MPI on as a guest. So I hope you look, look out for that pretty soon. And otherwise, that's been me, y'all. Awesome. Go check them out as well, guys. Links are in the description if you're an audio listener, which I know most of you are. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, real quick again, if you are an audio listener, please don't be afraid to leave us feedback. I've heard from a lot of you guys recently on Twitter. Thank you for reaching out. Please let us know if you have ideas or questions for the show. If you can't get to a live show, you can still submit your questions via Discord, email, or Twitter. Uh, just leave them there and we will bring them on as the first questions in the next show. Thank you guys for listening. Also, we'll be back on regular schedule next week. If you want to come out on Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern, That'll be Veli, Go Getter Greg, and one more person. Not sure yet. Stay tuned on that. And uh, again, you can check us out anywhere, guys. Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker. Please leave us reviews if you have some time. It means a lot to us. That's it for us, guys. We'll see you next Monday. Stick around for a little raid for a new true partner at the end of this. And uh, yeah, that's it. Somebody else want to say the sign off this time? Maybe. If you know it. Blaze up. Hey, there you go. Thank you, MPI. <laughs> 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 All right.